Welcome to a little big video titled 25 watercolor floral doodles to paint when you're bored and don't know what to paint. This is a ginormous tutorial, so let's get right into it. Hey friends, welcome back. What's up? My name is Shada Campbell and around here we make art and it's fun, not scary. Today's supplies include my sketchbook. This is a Canson XL series, super inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart, Amazon. I'm using my usual watercolor paints. Remember all the supplies are linked in the description. I've got a couple of uh, pointed round brushes here. I'm probably gonna do this whole thing with a number six brush, but use something smaller if you're more comfortable. Let's get right Right into it, we've got so much to paint together today. First up, we have lavender. I start with a little dark purple on the tip of my round brush, and I paint these tiny little lines in clusters, and the clusters get a little bit larger as I move down the page toward myself. And I'm gonna do another little line here. You can almost picture where that stem is going to run right through. And I don't know why, but I just like to paint the flower first. Then I take my green and I run the green right through the purple. And then I might add a few little leaves. Remember, these are watercolor doodles. It's perfectly imperfect. Do not sweat the small stuff. With that said, let's try a rose together. I begin with magenta and I paint a little cluster of dots. Then I grab a lighter pink and I move around those dots in a big swooping circular motion, painting kind of a broken spiral or circle. Let's do it again. A little cluster of dark pink dots, dark pink. And then we grab a lighter pink or a watery pink and we go around that center just making this broken spirally circle and the dark magenta kind of bleeds out into the rest of the flower. And then at the end, you add a few small leaves. My leaves are a mix of sap green and olive green. I'm not focusing on color today, but I will do my best to tell you what I'm using. Next up, sunflower. Using a light watery brown, we're going to paint a perfectly imperfect circle and then take a darker brown and kind of release the pigment into that wet area. If it's too much paint, you can sop it up with a dry brush. And then we come back in with a uh, yellow, like maybe a raw sienna, dark yellow. And we're just going to paint these tiny petals one at a time, kind of one or two brush strokes makes a perfectly imperfect petal. If you touch the raw sienna to that brown, You'll kind of get a nice little blend there. I love that blend of brown and yellow, those little happy accidents. That's what watercolor is all about. Okay, moving on. We're going to paint a daisy together. And for my daisy doodle, I use that raw sienna or any yellow to make a little circle for the center of the flower. Then I take a light French gray or Payne's gray on the tip of my brush and I kind of just use the paintbrush to draw petals. It's very much like drawing with a pen. So let's do some more little centers there. Two more centers of our daisies. And then we pick up a light French gray and we just kind of draw the outlines of little petals because these are doodles. It's a daisy doodle. It's very perfectly imperfect and cutesy. So we don't need to get like lost in the tiny details of doing a white flower. That can be a bit finicky. Use a bit of uh, dark olive green to paint the little stems and join your flowers together. Do some shaggy little leaves by kind of shaking the brush a bit. And that is our daisy doodle. I just like saying daisy doodle. <laughs> Okay, counting down from 25. That's a lot of flowers for one video. We are going to paint muscari or a grape hyacinth. So I've got this nice light periwinkle blue on my brush and I just paint this big cluster of dots. Let's do another one. I've mixed a little more purple in. We start with one dot and then two and you're kind of creating a little triangular or cone shape. Very perfectly imperfect, of course and just letting these dots cluster together. And you don't wanna see each and every dot, you know, you kind of want them to become a bit of a blur, especially towards the bottom. And then we'll come in with our nice blend of olive green and sap green. And using the tip of that brush, we're going to add two curving stems, maybe a few thin rounded leaves. And I just love the blend of blue and green that we get with the flower and stem. 
Wow, that's already five floral doodles down. Let's do a little housekeeping. We're gonna work a bit of wet on dry, starting with the rosebud. Just a few tiny dots of dark pink or maybe a curving line or two. It really adds that depth. And then the sunflower, a couple lines of that dark, darker raw sienna on the petals goes a long way. And finally, maybe a slight bit of dotting um, of dark brown on the stamen. Okay, counting down from 25, flower number 20 is a sweet pea. We're starting with a really cool pink, maybe mix a little purple into your pink. And each flower is basically just one or two messy brush strokes, a little splooch of the brush across the paper, and that is your sweet pea flower. Come in with an olive green, add these tiny little thin stems, some basic leaves and then I do these little curly cues these thin little curving lines and that really adds to the look of the sweet pea I'll also add a bit of a darker pink just a little bit more pigment there and it brings that doodle to life Let's try a hydrangea doodle together. I'm starting with a light blue mixed with a tiny bit of purple, and I'm just making a floral blossom that is a cluster of dots and messy brush strokes. Then here you can see I've mixed a little more purple and actually a bit of cobalt into my light blue, which is sort of an aqua color. And again, I'm making a little messy circle that's made up of a cluster of dots and messy brush strokes. And then we're going to take our olive green and we're going to add some rounded oval shaped leaves. And we might have them peeking out from behind our big hydrangea blossoms. And then we'll add a little stem and branch. You could add a couple branches there, maybe some more leaves. Just paint as many as you like. And then as those blossoms have begun to dry, you can come back in with a bit more of a pigmented uh, blend of light blue and purple and we will just do some more dotting. And it's this dotting that really makes it look like a hydrangea because of course the hydrangea flower is made up of all these tiny little flowers. So that's what we're trying to capture, the look of lots and lots of little flowers without actually painting them, with just painting dots. <laughs> and that's it. Let's move on and paint a pansy together. This time I'm using purple on my brush and I paint a heart shape. That's my first petal, just a messy heart. And then we're gonna come over to the right and kind of do a rounded petal shape, just touching the first ever so slightly. And then we'll drop down, another rounded petal, and finally complete the circle with a fourth. And we kind of join them all together, but you can kind of see that they're each, you know, a unique petal. Then we take a really dark violet, maybe a blend of violet and black and we just add a little at the center of the bottom three petals and it bleeds out so beautifully. While we're waiting for that to dry we can take a deep fallow green and add a leaf and then finally a little dot of yellow right in the center completes our pansy. We have only 17 more flowers to go, so let's take two seconds to break. And let me remind you that I have a watercolor e-course available. If you're curious about these techniques and color mixing and all the things that I mentioned and kind of breeze over on YouTube, the watercolor e-course might be for you. It's available on my website. It's $49 for lifetime access. It's made up of over 25 videos and you can do them at your own pace in your own time. Head to shadacampbell.com to read the syllabus and see photos of the coursework. Time for a gladiola doodle. I start at the top of this very vertical flower and I paint these little buds and dots and then the flowers kind of get bigger. They start with just a messy brush stroke, kind of like the sweet pea, and they get larger and more rounded, almost like the rose. And then I take a, a bit of olive green on the tip of my brush and I run that green just sort of in behind the buds and flowers. Maybe add a leaf or two off to one side and then take a darker yellow. In this case, I used raw sienna. We're gonna add some little thin brush strokes at the center of those large round flowers. That's gonna help give that look of the conical gladiola blossom. 
Next up, we have a wax flower, one of my personal favorites that I use often for photographing and styling for Instagram. I begin like the daisy with a little dot of uh, raw sienna for the center of the flower. And then I come in with a dark magenta and I paint four petals surrounding that, that middle bit. You can also start with the magenta petals and then just add that dot of raw sienna after. So do it however you feel comfortable. And you can paint some cluster of three petals to make it look like the flowers are kind of on an angle or facing away from your viewer. We'll put the raw sienna at the center. Then we'll take a dark brown like Van Dyke brown and add, join the cluster of flowers you've painted with some thin stems. And finally, take a dark green like deep phthalo green and we're going to add these little lines. Those make the thin leaves of the wax flower. One of my most requested flowers on YouTube, the tulip. So a tulip, I usually just try to paint kind of like a U shape. I'm using a really light blend of pink and white here. And there's my kind of U shape. Now I'm gonna take that sap green and add a stem. I like if I get a little blend of pink and green. I add these long thin leaves where I sort of wiggle the brush a bit. And then as the uh, pink part is still lightly wet, I can add a bit of darker pink there and just get a nice blend of color using that wet into wet technique. We'll come back to that one. We're gonna have to let it dry. And in the meantime, let's paint anthurium, white anthurium. I've got a bit of French gray in the tip of my brush and I am going to draw like an upside down heart shape, but very perfectly imperfect. Then using a wet clean brush, we're going to blend out that bit that I just drew so that it doesn't look too harsh. With the flower looking good, we're going to grab some sap green and just add a little thin stem right at the base of the heart, maybe one or two thin leaves. And then that one we also need to let dry. So let's come back to the tulip and we take a little dark brown on the tip of our brush. This is Van Dyke Brown and we add a bit of dotting. And then this one, our anthurium has dried. So here's how I do the stamen. I put a dot of sap green and then while it's still wet, I come in with a lemon yellow and I just sort of draw the line from the green down to the base of the heart and that gives me the stamen. Finish it up with two or three little lines of dark gray to show that it's a sort of trumpet shape, to show it's conical and you're all done. Peony doodle. Using raw sienna, do a cluster of little dots and lines. Then come in with a light pink. This is a red blended with tons of white and water. And we're just kind of making these little lines surrounding that stamen at the center and our brush strokes get larger and larger. And honestly, this one I kind of messed up. It just got like huge. Why do the worst flowers, like why do you, things always get so big when you mess up. <laughs> I'm gonna paint a messy circle there to be a peony bud. I take a little bit of darker pink and kind of add it into the wet area. These look a little messy, but remember, it's just doodles. We're gonna grab a deep thalo green. Um, I think that's blended with olive green as well because it's quite warm. We're going to add some leaves and stems and the leaves kind of peek out from behind the bud and the flower. It's not looking too bad, but <laughs> the flower blossom itself is a bit of a big puddle of pink, but you know what? It's all good. Let's move on and paint an aster. I start by painting the center of the flower and it's just a messy cluster of dots. And then I come in and I paint the petals, basically just one thin wonky brush stroke for each petal. And I go all the way around painting like the spokes of a wheel. This is a mix of light blue and purple, gives me a nice periwinkle. And the center of the flower is raw sienna mixed with orange. And that one's looking good. Let's paint another. This one I've mixed a little more purple in and I'm going to start by painting the petals. This is just another way to approach your little doodle. Do what, whatever you're comfortable with. I often prefer to paint my petals first and then end with the center of the flower. I'm going to use olive green and sap green to paint these just like messy little stems and shaggy leaves, very much like I did for the daisy doodle. And finally, we need to add our little bit of orangey dots to be the stamen at the center. Flower Doodle 11 is Kangaroo Paw from Australia. And I am starting with magenta in the tip of my brush and we just do these clusters of thin little petals and you kind of add a bit of pressure to the brush, wiggle it a little. You want these funny looking lines. Uh, that creates the look of the kangaroo paw flower. You make these funny lines that are a bit 
thicker and rounded at the outer edge and you cluster them. Then we take a dark green and we add these kind of messy curving stems that are a little weird. And we complete our kangaroo paw with some very thin lines for the leaves. Okay, 10, anemone. I am using Jaune Brilliant, which is like a nice light peachy color. And we are doing these big rounded petals. I go around in a circle and I paint five petals. If you run out of room, it doesn't really matter. They all kind of cluster together and they don't have to be perfect. And then don't you know, we need to wait for that to dry. So let's paint eucalyptus while we wait. For my eucalyptus, I start with one or two thin, thin lines. Uh, I just messed that up. I can't believe I just did that. We're like almost counted down to one and I made a big mistake. I did not mean to make that line thick at the top, but you know what? You can always fix it. So that's not true, but you can usually fix it. I just kind of made the end of the line into a leaf and then I'm gonna extend my eucalyptus and paint a really, truly thin line and some tiny leaves. So this is not the eucalyptus of my dreams, but I'm trying to make it work by adding a delicate bit on top of the big, flumpy, messy bit that I just painted. Let's come back and finish up our anemone. Now it is dry and I'm painting a cluster of little dots in a dark Van Dyke brown right at the center. Then we're gonna clean our brush and using a dry brush, we just pull these little lines out of that wet area. And then you should have enough paint in your brush just from pulling the lines that you can paint all these little dots. And that gives us the look of that big, complex, beautiful anemone stamen. Okay, our lily doodle. For this, I start with a very watery French gray and I give myself a guide. I paint five lines like a star shape. Then once I know where the petals will sit, I go around and I just make these big pointed oval shaped petals. So I've got five really, really light gray. If you've got too much pigment there, just sop it up a bit with a damp, clean brush. We're gonna add a stem, a little thicker towards the flower, maybe one or two leaves that kind of go in behind the petals. Making little choices like that, like putting a leaf in behind the petal, even though this is a doodle, it's gonna make it look so good, <laughs> basically. And then we take a dark magenta, and while that flower is still lightly wet, we're adding some lines. The lines kind of follow the shape of the petal. They, they go out towards the edge of the petal. That pink is gonna blend beautifully into the light gray area, and you can add some dotting as well, and we get that beautiful burst of color. Okay, we are quickly closing in on our final few floral doodles. Let's paint a lupin. I start with a little line to kind of guide me. And then very much like the mascari, we are painting this flower in little dots. And the dots get larger and more clustered together as we make our way down from the point at the top to this kind of cone, larger cone shape at the bottom. Um, I do put a little bit of a darker purple towards the top and then I add a few green dots to kind of finish the cone shape. Then I take that green and run it through, put my thin stem and the leaf is kind of this star shape. So a nice burst of four or five leaves. And that is the lupin. You can also paint a blue bonnet that way, just switch up the color. Okay, daffodil. I have a very light yellow. So this is basically just white with a little touch of raw sienna or some sort of yellow in it. And we're painting six large rounded petals that come to a bit of a point. And if you need to do a guide first, like we did with the lily, go ahead and do that. Then we're taking an olive green and we're going to add a stem that's very thick towards the top to where the, it meets the flower. Put those large pointed leaves in there, just like the lily. And now we take a dark orange and we draw a circle at the center and then we draw or paint all these tiny little lines kind of flowing out like a turning that circle into a bit of a crown. You can put a few uh, brush strokes of darker yellow there where the orange is and that is our daffodil bit more housekeeping now before we hit our final five floral doodles. I want to add the stamen to the lily because it has dried and I'm just using Van Dyke Brown and we're painting these little lines and then we kind of attach them to longer lines if that makes sense. Just keep it simple. Remember it is a doodle. Okay, flower number five is mimosa and this is another fun one to paint because we're 
using a bit of dark yellow and we're just painting a big old cluster of little dots. Uh, you don't want them to all be the same size. They can be um, different sizes. Some of them can be very separate. Others can cluster together, kind of making a bit of a, a must up area. That's what I'm doing here, kind of blending them a bit. I don't want to just have unique dots. I want it to look a little bit watery and messy, perfectly imperfect as usual. <laughs> and then I take um, sap green on the very tip of my brush and we're just running the lightest little thinnest line uh, in behind those yellow dots and we might get a little blending of yellow and green and we'll put some very thin delicate uh, lines or brush strokes down and those will be our leaves. Flower number four is the bluebell, and unlike many of the others, I begin with the stem. So using my green to kind of paint this cane-shaped stem and maybe add a leaf or two. And then I come in with a dark blue. This is a mix of cobalt and purple. And we do these little um, kind of just oval-shaped blossoms and we paint them all along that u-shaped stem they can cluster together they can overlap or they can be singular and then i use a little bit of that dark blue just on the tip of my brush and kind of add some dots along the bottom of each blossom while the area is still wet so that it all blends together really nicely and that's it for our bluebell Next we're painting jasmine, but let's just take a second to be like, wow, that's a lot of flowers. We've done so many doodles already. But moving right along, because we got lots more to do, we are going to paint jasmine. I am using my light French gray, and very much like the daffodil and the lily, I am painting this little flower one petal at a time, and I kind of just um, make five petals. They all kind of blend together and I'm keeping it very, very light. I'm gonna let that dry using a deep thallow green to paint these long, thin leaves um, that are sort of clustered together. And then we use our raw sienna and the jasmine, we really wanna show that the stamen's very delicate. So we're just painting this cluster of teeny, teeny, tiny little dots. Um, that also works for an apple blossom. Who wants to paint a marigold? I start with Naples yellow. I'm using a thin number two brush here and I just paint a circle of little lines. Then I come around with a dark orange and I kind of continue that circle of lines. And if the orange and the yellow mix a little, great. That really gives us the look of the marigold. I'm going to use deep thallow green and do my little tiny leaves. They look cute. That's it for my marigold. Let's do a little more housekeeping because we only have one more flower to go. Some of these flowers maybe look a little flat, although they are doodles. They don't need a lot of punching up. I can do things like um, taking a darker blue and adding some more dotting to those hydrangeas so that it really looks like they are a cluster of tiny little flowers. I can add some thin lines um, on the gladiola to help with that trumpet shape. Same thing on the mascari. I can, you know, just a few little dots of darker blue and purple, maybe adding um, a line of dark color on the bluebell to show that they have a little more depth. So that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. You don't want to overdo it because these are such simple little floral doodles. I decided my sunflower needed like a little stem and leaves just to fill in that area of the of the sketchbook. And I tried to save my messy peony, but oh boy, of course she's the biggest one. It's always the way. Remember friends, you can head to my website to check out my watercolor e-course, treat yourself $49 for lifetime access and get painting this summer. And then I am finishing this off with the simplest of flowers, which is a little buttercup. Just taking my tiny brush and a bit of Naples yellow, and we're just painting five little leaves of petals clustered together. Use a dot of brown at the center, and that's it. You guys, 25 flowers, oh my gosh. This was just a crazy video. She's a mammoth, and I hope you enjoy watching and painting along as much as I really enjoyed filming and creating this for you. Thanks for watching. If you wanna say thank you, Shada, for this content, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. Help me get to a million. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.